I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today we have with us Bridget Nakoni. Welcome, Bridget. Hi, thank it's you. It's so nice to have you here. The last time you were here, you were here with the Sweet Lodge Sisters, right? Yes, yes, it's great to be back. And we'll have to bring the sisters back. Yes. But today we're going to focus on you. Sure. So thanks for being here, and tell me about your tribe. Thanks for having me. Um, it's great welcome. to be here. Um, I'm originally from New Mexico, Pueblo of Acoma. My mom is from Acoma. Um, and uh, it's a pretty old reservation that we come from. Sky uh, City. Sky City. And I'm very proud to be Acoma. Uh, my mother raised us to be proud of who we are, no matter what, she yeah. said. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what no matter what meant. But um, I... Uh, when, as I became an adult, you know, and being Indian in in America, uh -huh. I know what that no matter what is. So, yeah. Ah, but you said you lived a lot of your life in Hawaii. Yes, I. Uh, well, my mom joined the Navy out of boarding school, oh, okay. and she met my father, who's mm -hmm. Irish, uh, from New York City, and um, they had three children, and we moved all over the world. So I was born in Panama. And we eventually settled in Hawaii when I was uh, in high school, in the ninth grade. And I lived there for 20 years. Wow, yeah. that must have been some experience. Yeah, it was very nice. Now let's see, I have a picture here, mm -hmm. and I think it is of your... That's my father's parents, um, Alice and uh, Christopher uh, Wilkie. And they are from... Um, how, uh, what's it called? Cary County in Ireland. I've wow. never been, but um, I am very close to them. Um, they did pass uh, many years ago, but um, I still keep in touch with my father who lives in Florida now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did they live in New York or Florida? Or? They did. They immigrated to New York and eventually settled in Virginia, and now uh, they moved down to Florida. So that's oh, where the, the Wilkie side of my family is kind of spread out, but uh -huh. um, that's where they were at. Now my on the Acoma Pueblo side, mm -hmm. we have? So that's my Auntie Mary, and this is recent uh, up at Acoma. She's, um, my mom passed away years ago, so um, my aunties are like my mom's now. Mm -hmm. So, and also my grandmother passed away years ago, so it's been hard for me to reconnect traditionally with my Acoma side, so my auntie has been, um, and other family members and friends over the years have been um, welcoming back me back home into the oh, traditions nice. and helping me, you know, to, um, uh, my dream is to, to dance up at Acoma, so um, whatever that takes, I, you know, would oh, like to learn wonderful. more about dancing and, you know, dressing in our traditional way back mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Well, you know my husband's half. Yeah, Billy. So we yes. have family. I know. <laughs> I see Billy up there. And it's really uh -huh. nice to know that someone from here also is from Acoma. We go right. there and, you know, we, I've, I've come to know a lot of people up at Acoma with my job, too. So oh, um, good. it's been a really great, you know, um, opportunity for me to go back home after mm -hmm. many years of being away and, you know, back and forth. You know, right. I really would love to someday just stay there. But it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. A little on the hot side, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it is, and it just has a whole different um, vibe to it. Uh, and with no electricity, um, no running water, you know, we carry all of our water up. And, and the cell phone doesn't work. There. Cell phone doesn't work. You can hold it up as high as you want. It doesn't but matter. It doesn't it's not going to work. Gonna work. Um, you have to go down <laughs> below uh, right. to 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 uh, access it's any beautiful. of the modern amenities mm -hmm. and we, we want it to be like that you know. I, I that's nice mm -hmm. it's nice yeah it's like it was because you're going back in time ago. when you're there it's it's amazing it's it's amazing that that could even exist in the, uh, our country today and a lot of people don't know you know the old traditional ways that we can still survive and um you know feel good about where we come from and live in our homeland where we've always been we weren't relocated anywhere, so right. the roots are very deep there. And when you when I go home, I can feel it. You know, that's where I belong. Right. You know? But you have traveled quite a bit, mm -hmm. right? So in Hawaii, 
You were a dancer. So when I was in Hawaii, um, my mother really pressured me into taking up hula dancing because she n you know, wanted me to dance uh, up at Akoma, and I didn't have that opportunity. Ah. So when we went to Hawaii, she saw this as her opportunity to get me um, in some performing arts and dancing Hawaiian dance. So my sister and I, we, we joined a, a Hawaiian halau, which is a, a hula school, and um, I picked it up very quickly, and um, be we, be we became show um, dancers in their, in their shows. Um, my sister dropped out because um, she couldn't handle the costume changes. <laughs> you have to move <laughs> um, fast, right? Yeah, you have to be really quick. <laughs> and um, I stuck with it, and I ended up uh, becoming, um, um, uh, graduating from the Halau, uh, which was Ilima Hula Studio and from Oahu, and we, were, we danced in Mary Monarch. And when I was in high school, and which is competition dancing, and then after high school, I became a professional Polynesian dancer. Wow. I know. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I have to show this picture of you okay. because it is just stunning. So when, we, um, when I danced uh, Hawaiian dance in the show, we also learned all of the Polynesian dances. So that's uh -huh. a photograph from um, the New Zealand uh, Maori dance. So I danced um, New Zealand. Tongan, Samoan, Tahitian, um, wow. Fijian, um, Tongan, and um, in the different various shows that I was in, in Waikiki or on, you know, on, on now, the road. It was a dance troupe that went on the road, or um, we did some touring in um, when I first got out of high school, and I also toured to some other countries. But that was my job, so mm -hmm. I would move around from show to show, you know, whoever, you know, was hiring. Mm -hmm. And I would learn their dances that they were showing. And um, there was a breadth of Polynesian um, dances, so we would change, you know, outfits and, mm -hmm. and do a, an hour-long show, uh, usually around two shows a night in Waikiki, um, six days a week. Wow. So that was my job. Wow, what was that experience like? That must have been interesting. I mean, just it was um, it was fun, uh -huh. and um, but it was a very physically active. So it takes a lot of stamina, and so I worked out. You know, I uh -huh. went swimming and I ran and ate well, and you know, tried to live a healthy lifestyle in in Hawaii uh, because you had to keep up with the the dance wow. and the demand. Um, and uh, I really. Uh, um, enjoyed the camaraderie between the other dancers who uh -huh. now we you know some of us are still friends oh, and so we nice. have our old hula photos uh -huh. you know that we kind of bring out every now and then and kind of feel proud of you know where we came from now I have another beautiful picture of you oh. that I want you to tell me what you're doing here besides dancing okay, <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know this about me but um, I um, danced in a, another show that was called the Follies Polynesia. And so uh -huh. if you're from Hawaii back in the day, you remember the room, the Le Boom Boom Room. That's what it was called. So it was um, uh, a mix of um, traditional dances, mm -hmm. but also a Las Vegas style uh, show uh -huh. dance. So the director who was Jack Sion, he got um, outfits from Las Vegas, brought them to Hawaii, and, and wow. with, along with the music by Jack DeMello, um, put on this show, uh, f and I was in for a number of years, um, and this was a number called the um, the birds. So I was the red bird, and you know there was five birds, and uh -huh. basically it was music that we you know just sort of pranced around stage on. So um, so were you singing or just dancing at this time? Um, at this show, we were we were just dancing. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was it was actually recorded music, but it was a beautiful show. It was really a very well done a production. Um, that was a mix of modern and, and, and traditional, and a lot of fun. How fascinating. Yeah, male and female dancers. And then I have a picture of you, and I want to know what they're doing here. I hope they're not throwing knives at you or <laughs> anything like that. No, <laughs> I was a magician's assistant. So uh, at one point in time, you know, I was not dancing in a show, but a friend of mine, um, his name is Marvin Oka, and he was a magician in Hawaii, taught me how to be a, a magician's assistant. And we worked uh, with some props, and this is where he is um, sort of slicing me in threes, 
So, you know, the center part of my body would come out from there and then, you know, oh, he'd wow. sort of magically put me back I together again. I always wondered how they did that. I can't tell the secrets. You can't tell. When you're a magician's <sighs> assistant, you're sort of sworn yeah, to secrecy. Yeah, so, But every now and then, like, Just when say, I'm put everything back where, it's yeah. where you started, huh? Yeah, but it was a lot of fun because we worked <laughs> with birds and, you know, he had to bring out birds and I had to put the birds, you know, in places for him and... Occasionally, the bird would, you know, get loose, and <laughs> it was my fault. Get I had to chase here. the bird, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, yeah, funny. it was a lot of fun. They didn't slice um, you. That's where they cut you in half, or they just took you apart. They just, they, the <laughs> box, yeah, comes apart. But he also did a levitating one. I have another an, picture of me levitating so he could, like, lift me up. That was sort of painful, but, you know, we managed to do it every, every, I think the magic show was uh, once a week on Thursday nights. In the wow, Sheraton. fun. Yeah, Sheraton Waikiki. Well, that's mm -hmm. some experience. And where did you travel to? I mean, where's the furthest place you've been? Um, well, like you when, you know, growing up with my dad, we lived in, you know, Japan and the Philippines. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So um, I was very exposed to a lot of different cultures. When, and I thought, well, I'll settle down in Hawaii. But when I got to Hawaii, I ended up traveling to the mainland, which is here, and Canada, and also traveled to um, Indonesia and, and also um, South America. Uh, I went to Peru and Brazil dancing. And then um, I think the most interesting place I went to was South Africa, and it was during the time of apartheid. Wow. So I got a really good eye op opener there and a very oh good experience. Um, being raised in Hawaii, I didn't really experience a lot of racism. Um, but when I went to South Africa, I saw how different, you know, life is for people. Um, and it was very harsh. Um, it was a good experience, but, you know, I was happy to come home. We danced on the south coast of South Africa. Um, how were you treated? We were honorary white. So, because okay. we were American, yeah. so we were allowed to um, mingle with the whites. Uh -huh. Although the white Afrikaners did not treat us as if we were white, so it was it was very disturbing, <laughs> um, and it was only for three months. So you know, I just stayed there for three months, and uh -huh. um, um, you know, got to um, um, see some of the the countryside and the way people live there, and interacted a lot with the non-whites wow. in in South Africa. No. Well, Very that's good. That's a good experience. Good experience. That's for sure. Yes. And then you came to California somehow and settled over here. How would you get here? Uh-huh. Um, after I had been in Hawaii for a number of years, I wanted to um, just experience the mainland. Um, Hawaii can be, you know, very limiting and, you know, rock fever. Um, things were getting there like two years later than they were happening on the mainland. And so I moved to New Mexico to go back and stay with my mom, who had left mm -hmm. Hawaii by then. And I tried to find work there. And I really couldn't find um, hula dancing jobs. I taught hula um, and, and um, worked with some other dancers. Um, they were belly dancers, and I was Hawaiian dancer. So we did some shows together. And I taught them, and they taught me. Um, eventually, I, I found my way to California uh -huh. and decided I needed to go back to school. So I ended up going back to school and, and pursuing where'd you go? that. I went to three different California ah. community <laughs> colleges okay. first. Uh -huh. And then when I ended up in the Bay Area, I finally transferred to UC Berkeley. And that was probably the best decision I've ever made was to earn a, a, at least a bachelor's degree uh -huh. um, and at uh, you know, UC, which is a uh, well-known, you know, institution that mm -hmm. I had no idea was that great until I went there and um, found a really good experience working with the Native American students at Berkeley mm -hmm. and being part of the Native American student organization and working in the Hearst Museum. I worked in the education department there ah. as a work-study student so that was a good experience for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you're working there now as a professional. Yes, so I got lucky enough because of my background and some of the networks I had made um, when they were looking for a recruiter for UC Berkeley mm -hmm. um, to recruit Native American students. I, I was available after I graduated, um, a year after I graduated, mm -hmm. and I um, uh, was lucky enough to be given this opportunity to uh, work in the Office of Undergraduate Admission oh, at nice. UC Berkeley. Yeah. And do you see um, 
uh, more Native students going to college? Um, do you still see the obstacles there for them that have been there traditionally? Mm -hmm. the, there are a lot of obstacles. Um, although, I, and then I do see more and more Native uh, programs and services mm -hmm. and people. Um, although the obstacles are still there, the, there's also a lot of opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I don't remember these types of opportunities available, summer programs, mm -hmm. um, you know, college fairs. Um, the, you know, how you have to, you know, uh, assert yourself if you want to go to college, you have to be the one to let people know you want to go and mm -hmm. then people will help you. Right. Um, if I had known that, you know, when I was growing up that there were programs or scholarships available and um, I, it, things might have, you know, been, mm -hmm. I might have got a degree earlier. But um, I do try to um, inform families and counselors and um, tribal um, people across the nation. Now I still travel. Mm -hmm. um, I can't get away from it. I guess um, not. <laughs> and um, but it's a good um, opportunity for me um, to um, take something that I know and use my experience to try to help others. That that really makes me feel like I'm, I'm making a contribution to Indian Country mm -hmm. by um, uh, providing access and working with the university so that they can understand Native populations. Um, so it's not just about us giving information to the Native communities, but about helping to inform the academy, you know, the um, faculty and the administration um, of, about Native populations. That's very important. Now, do you feel there's support, parental support for the kids nowadays, or do you find yourself having to intercede and, and encourage the parents to let their kids go to school? Um, there's both. More and more, I see a lot more parents. Um, this this present year, we have recruited about five, you know, st uh, students in California from mm -hmm. tribal communities, and their parents are very involved. Okay. It's really refreshing good. to see the parent, yes. you know, asking all the questions, you know, mm -hmm. um, and being supportive. Um, and they, uh, we get applicants to the university, um, not everybody that gets admitted mm -hmm. wants to go to Berkeley. We might be a backup for mm -hmm. other, other colleges, but the ones that really want to go to Berkeley that will, will come to Berkeley and their whole families, it's like their whole, the whole family is coming to Cal. Uh -huh. And so, you know, we, That's good. it they is, have the support it is very family. good. And I really get to know not just the student, but their brothers and their sisters. Uh -huh. and, and um, we work together on, you know, uh, student success mm -hmm. and, and showing them that there is a support network of people at the university that will welcome them. It's not going to be easy. You know, I'm really very honest with families that it mm -hmm. is a hard road. Cal is tough. You know, it's very mm -hmm. rigorous and the, the student body there are very competitive. And so the student, you know, Native students really have to uh, be competitive. They have to want to, you know, um, have this great but rigorous experience mm -hmm. and just keep at it. So every year we graduate a few more. It's not large numbers, but, right. you know, um, I see them out there now getting their doctorates, their ah, law wonderful. degrees, you know, they're having children and they have families and stuff. It's really nice. I and especially if they can encourage family members, brothers, sisters, or other, you know, extended family members to go to college. Yes, we you have know. that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. We just admitted someone whose brother graduated a few years ago, so now he's coming in too. Ah, uh, that's and his family's wonderful. great. They really help out with our powwow and they, they, they ask a lot of questions. They take a lot of pictures for us. And, okay, which know. powwow is this? You see Berkeley powwow in the spring every year. We usually have it the first weekend in May. Um, this coming year, we may have it the last weekend in April. And the students have a lot to do mm -hmm. with putting it together. The yeah, it's like a big open house for okay. our native community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we want the Bay Area Indian community to come and see the campus, and, and we want to meet them and let them know that we have put on this event and host, you know, for them, mm -hmm. um, for the community. Um, we do have the students come out. Not all of them are powwow. You know, um, uh, they don't come from a powwow culture. They're right, California right. Indian, or they may come from an urban community. Um, so they're learning how to put on a powwow, mm -hmm. and you know, they're learning leadership skills, right? Um, organizing, and, you know, organizing, and how to how to work with administration, and you know, some of that can be kind of hairy, and we have to. You know, it's it's um, a good atmosphere though for for native youth in the Bay Area if they are interested in going to Berkeley or just going to college. Come out to the powwow, meet other native people. Mm -hmm. You know, start getting involved, feeling comfortable, 
and uh, go to college. We need, I don't care what college it is, go to college, exactly. you know, go we to school. We do work together with the other UC schools, UCLA, uh -huh. UC Riverside, oh, good. Um, UC Irvine. We and have probably the community colleges our too for there. Yeah, we, we work with the community colleges mm -hmm. um, and we encourage just higher education. Um, they can, you know, we know a lot about the different colleges. I don't just know about Berkeley, but I know about the entire UC system, mm -hmm. the CSU schools, the community college, and the independent schools. We do some things with other, you know, uh, we com competitive schools. So we, we all, I know the reps from, you know, the Ivy League. Right, and right. So um, we do have a sort of a non-competitive um, colleague um, mm -hmm. network. That's good. Um, where we're all wrapping our arms around the entire you know, American population of native, you know, native people, tribal communities, tribal colleges. And That's we're all good. trying to get on the same page on a national level um, because there's not enough of us at once, one place. We do have to connect with others to grow in numbers, you know. Um, That's right. So the, numbers. the kids that just graduated, <laughs> call Bridget if you're interested in furthering yes. your uh, yes. you can do it if I can do yeah, it you can do we, it that's right <laughs> and uh, there's a bit I think that's a bear in this picture here oh yeah that's my my good friend Oski that's Oski and you're <laughs> yeah. probably recruiting or doing something yeah. here yeah, he's our mascot for Berkeley so um, and he goes you to go all the games to the powwows now and I go you. and I recruit at the powwows that's at um, the city of Berkeley powwow which people confuse with the Berkeley powwow but uh, the okay. city of Berkeley also has a powwow so there's a few powwows out there I know we're running out of time mm -hmm. but I a couple things I wanted to touch on now you were being honored where in this photo I have an opportunity every year to go to Oklahoma to Durant um, to work with the Choctaw Nation mm -hmm. and uh, I've been going every year um, to a college fair a beautiful college fair that they invite us to to recruit their students and help them and we've actually recruited some Choctaw students to Cal and uh, last year the last time I went not in 2014 I think that was 2013 um, I they honored me Oh, yeah, nice. for my work that I do and so it's you know a blessing to be honored it, um, it, it doesn't come very is. often so I'm really and proud. also congratulations on your KQED award yes that was another opportunity uh -huh. that I had to um, to really feel good about the work that I do it's it's a lot of hard work and you know um, the working in an institution like Berkeley you know you feel sort of um, uh, isolated, mm -hmm. you know, but when your own community recognizes you for the work that you do, that's even more important than the academy saying, you know, congratulations Absolutely. for your work. Absolutely, yeah. and it's so important, the mm -hmm. work that you do, because we need kids to graduate mm -hmm. from high school, yes. from college, yeah. from junior college, all of the above. Yeah, including my own. <laughs> <laughs> that's my son just went one. back to college, that's oh, why. So good, I'm hoping good. that he will be able to transfer somewhere soon. Well, a lot of kids just graduated mm -hmm. this uh, last couple weeks in mm -hmm. June, and uh, hopefully they'll think about going to college or plan on going to college. I know it's a lot more difficult than it used to be to get in. Before it was just an application, now they have to write. Oh, it's, it's kind of crazy uh -huh. out there. It's a very global. So the competition are, you know, uh, students from around the world, from China, India, mm -hmm. um, and other countries. Um, our students are competing with that, the global society. So we really need to prepare them early. And, and it's so expensive. It does cost a lot, you know, and so we w inform students about how to apply for financial mm -hmm. aid and how to access scholarships. That's good. So one of the other things I do is I read for the Gates Millennium Scholarship. Um, I've been re a reader and uh, more recently a trainer. So I train the readers. Um, oh, good. Um, and if a student gets a Gates Scholarship, it pays for the entire unmet need. Um, so uh, really uh, have to be knowledgeable in a lot of different areas just to recruit one Indian. Wow, you know, yeah. and, and make sure that that, that uh, individual has everything they need to succeed. It, what's the retention rate? Do you have, um, I know our people need a lot of support because they are isolated in many cases when they go to these colleges or if they go away from home. Is there a support system? I guess because there's a student union there, mm -hmm. they kind of support each other. It, it sort of depends. Uh, it depends on the student. Um, they don't do a lot of um, numbers crunching for our mm -hmm. population because it's so small. Mm -hmm. They've even said that we are 
um, insignificant, you know, in terms of data and research. And so uh, we just we we just have a um, what would you say uh, qualitative um, studies. Um, we know which ones came in and which ones left. Right. Um, and it's even hard to do. What I found out was to do data on Native students because when you only have that one and you report that one, it's, everyone yeah. knows who that one is. So right. then it becomes a privacy issue. So there's a lot of issues around data and doing research on, on Native students and reporting numbers and why we report them and how we report them. And this is another area that I've been also working in policy and, and data research. Thank you for mm -hmm. all the work that you do. And I know that you and your husband, I'm gonna show this picture real quick oh, before yeah, we close, are bring. both very involved on the campus and in the community. Yes. So we do appreciate all the work that uh, the two thank of you, you do. And I wanna thank you for coming. Thank you. And Rose. next time you have to come on and sing with the uh, with the other uh, ladies. Okay. Invite us back. Uh, absolutely. I guess we'll have to put the band back together. <laughs> <Put> <laughs> but the thank girls. you for being Rick the, thank bring you so the much. girls. You're yes, quite I welcome. Really enjoy being here. Thank you for joining us this evening. We'll see you next week on Native Voice TV and like us on Facebook. Good night. Mm -hmm.